Hello and welcome to this video on the guitar tremolo effect. In this video, we're going to be going over theory of operation, some design considerations, and view some measurements and waveforms. By the time this video ends, you have a better understanding of the tremolo guitar effect and how to design one for yourself. So let's go ahead and get into it. The basic operating principle of the tremolo effect is very simple. We just want to vary the output amplitude in a controlled manner. We can do this by creating a voltage divider and varying R2, the resistor that's in parallel with our output. Here's an output waveform of a tremolo pedal. Notice how the amplitude varies in a controlled manner, is periodic, and the amplitude goes from high to low, and there's a smooth transition. This is what we're going for in our design. Varying the volume knob as you let a chord or a note ring out demonstrates this effect. It's ineffective and nearly impossible to vary the volume knob when you're strumming. So we're going to create a circuit to vary the output amplitude for us. For comparison, I'll play one F major chord cleanly, then turn the tremolo effect on. One great way to vary our output amplitude is to use a photoresistor. Photoresistors change their resistance as a function of the amount of light that's on them. Their resistance drops as their exposure to light increases. LEDs are a great light source for this photoresistor. I'll take some measurements so we can understand the photodiode's behavior. In this environment, and when the LED is off, the resistance measured is 43.59 kiloohms. When the LED is on, 37.67 kiloohms. In real time, we flash back between those values. However, if the lighting conditions of the environment changes, then we'll get some offset. We get about 40 kiloohms of offset when a shadow passes by. We can use heatsink tubing to solve this problem. The heatsink tubing not only directs the LED's light more directly to the photoresistor, but shields it from the light in the environment. We'll get consistent results if we shield the photoresistor and the LED. Here are the measurements after we shield the photoresistor. With the lights on in the background and our photoresistor shielded, we get about 1.1885 mega ohms. This is when the LED is off. We get a minimum resistance measured of 0.0454 mega ohms. This is 45.4 kilo ohms. The shielding not only provides more consistent measurements, but allows us for a more dynamic range of resistance change. I'll turn off the lights in the background and take the same series of measurements. Our new maximum resistance is 2.882 mega ohms. Our new minimum is 55.1 kilo ohms. If you design a pedal and put it in an enclosure, you want to take some measurements when the lights are off. This better mimics what's going to happen inside an enclosure. Now we know how we can control the resistance, we just need to pick the R1 in our voltage divider. Our objective is to let the input voltage equal the output voltage when the LED is off. This example shows if the photoresistor's value is 100 times that of the value of R1, then the input is essentially equal to the output. It's about 99% of its original value. If the LED is on and the photoresistor's value equals that of R1, then we get half of our output voltage. In these conditions, if the photoresistor equals 100 times R1, we'll be at the maximum peak and our input will equal our output. When the photoresistor equals R1, then our output amplitude will be half of the inputs so we'll vary between the two as the LED flashes. Here's a comparison of the input and output. We get pretty close to the ideal conditions set before about the minimum and maximum conditions. 
Due to non-ideal effects, we're not perfect, but for this guitar pedal, it works very well. Here's a look at the signal that's turning the LED off and on. I'm using a sine wave. A key observation is that the LED requires a certain amount of forward bias voltage, the turn on voltage, to make sure that it's illuminated. Typically, it's about 1.2 to 1.7 volts. If the signal that's turning the LED on and off is not exceeding the turn on voltage of the LED, then we don't get any illumination. Notice how the negative portion of the sine wave, the input equals the output, and even for some positive voltages. But when the LED starts to turn on, we get the variance in amplitude. Also notice how the amplitudes are slightly different, but this is great. This creates a nice smooth effect and is pleasant on the ear, so we don't have sharp transitions between the on and off state. You can customize the tremolo effect by increasing the frequency at which you're pulsing the light. Here I doubled the frequency. Notice how the amplitude changes at a different rate now. As you change the frequency, your amplitudes will vary in different ways. One observation is you can turn the tremolo off if you decrease the amount of voltage you're biasing your LED at. So you enable clean and the tremolo effect and can control the presence of the effect. Here are some direct comparisons of different frequencies at which I'm pulsing the LED with. This is 4 hertz. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you learned a lot more about the tremolo effect and how it works and how you can design one for yourself. Stay tuned for more content and more to come on this tremolo pedal.